Here's proof that your prosperity comes from God. Your soul also prospers. Your soul also, also prospers. In other words, your spiritual life goes up when your financial life goes up. If your prosperity is from God, the more financially prosperous you are, the more spiritually buoyant you are. That's how you tell. That's how you tell. You know, sometimes you want to know, how do I know that this, ma this man's money comes from God or from the devil? Very simple. If that man is prospering and you don't find him in the house of God, his money is not from God. If that man is prospering and he does not like to mention the name Jesus, his wealth is not from God. Even if he says, praise God, the devil will never allow you to prosper and your soul prosper at the same time. He uses prosperity or he uses financial resources to entice people into his kingdom. Mark chapter number 8, the Bible says in verse 36, he says, for what will it profit a man? Somebody say profit. Okay, in other words, he's about to say this kind of profit, you shouldn't be interested in this kind of profit. The Bible says if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul. So, there is provision in the kingdom of the devil for you to gain the whole world. For you to gain financially. But there's a cost factor. It's called your soul. Understand that in the kingdom of God, we need finances in the last days because you can't effectively preach the gospel without money. It's not, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Are you listening? But God is saying, despite the fact that money is needed in his house, he is more concerned about how you get it. Because the wealth is to win souls anyway in the end. The devil uses financial resources to entice people so he takes their soul. God uses financial resources in the church so we can hold crusades. So we can go online with an unlimited budget to win souls. So the enemy is after souls. God is also after souls. And so I want you to make sure that you understand that when, 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 when God raises you in his kingdom, the higher you, your head rises, hello, the more your knees must hit the ground in worship. Mm, I wish you'd get that. The higher God raises you financially, the more spiritual you must become. Let me show you how important the soul is. The whole of heaven rejoices when one soul is saved. The whole of heaven. In other words, it doesn't matter what those angels are doing, what those seraphims are doing. When one person is saved on planet earth, everything stops. All business in heaven stops so they can celebrate that one soul. It's amazing how you have a, a garage to park your car and lock it and lock it safe. Hello? You have a safe where you put your money so your money is safe. You have a box of jewelry where you put your jewelry and you lock it so it's safe. And you keep all those things safe. But your soul, you just leave it out there. It means you don't understand the value of your soul. Your soul is valuable. And the devil is not after anything else other than your soul. If he cannot get you with poverty, the enemy will get you with prosperity. How does he get you with poverty? He frustrates you so much until you're offended at God. Then he's got you. And if you go past the poverty test, there's the prosperity test. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? If he has penthouses in Cape Town, but he has lost his soul. If he has a fleet of 45 trucks, but his soul is gone, the Bible says that man is a loser. He has given up something more precious. Can you imagine your soul is more precious than a penthouse in Cape Town? Your soul is more precious than a fleet of 100 trucks. Your soul is more precious than a private jet. 
Your soul is more precious than a million US dollars. I know you are not agreeing with me because you did not know that within you, you are carrying a valuable commodity called your soul. It's so valuable that devil is willing to invest all that he has in exchange for your soul. Listen, it is not wisdom for us to wait for the evangelism of wealthy people that they will come and finance the gospel. It's not going to happen. If they have money and they are not in God's kingdom, we don't need that money. We only want it as it comes through wealth transfer. Listen to me. Because that money will come with issues. Pane marinema issues. Pane marinema attachments. Pane maria You don't want that kind of money. You want the blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10, 22, that makes rich and adds no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord that makes rich and the, and the blood of your child is not required on a satanic altar to, to maintain your wealth. That devil is a liar. There are men and women in the satanic kingdom who make money but they lose their, all their children. Every year they have to sacrifice one child. That devil is a liar. Hallelujah. We need to, for there to be a shift in the kingdom. We need people in the kingdom of God who rise from the ashes. We need this valley of dry bones to rise up as a mighty, mighty financial army for God. Hallelujah. I know things are dry. I know things are very dry. But by this word, you shall rise. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the key issue is for you to keep serving God without money. Hallelujah. Because what Babylon system will do is because you have made up your mind that I'm going to serve serve God, I'm going to prosper and my soul will also prosper. Babylon will start to put pressure on you. I said they'll begin to put pressure on you. Is it not the Babylon system that put pressure on the three Hebrew boys and they say to them, you've got to bow down and worship. And the three Hebrew boys, they said, no, we're not going to bow down and worship. They were, they were threatened with fire. Just like you are, you are being threatened yourself with the economic meltdown. That is the fire of Babylon. That is threatening people. That if you don't bow, if you don't compromise, if you don't pay bribes, if you don't have carpet interview, you are not going to rise. But we want people that are like those three Hebrew boys. I said, no matter what you say, no matter what kind of pressure you put on me, I am not going to bow down. This is not a good deal. It's a bad deal. As I bow down to that idol, I am losing my relationship with God and my relationship with God is eternal. Bills are temporary, cars are temporary, houses are temporary, but my relationship with God is eternal. So I'm gonna go ahead and focus on eternity. And you're not gonna put any amount of pressure on me, Babylon, uh, for me to sleep with someone for money. That devil is a liar. Hallelujah! I will not give up my soul. Lord, whatever I cannot get through you, I don't want it. I'm not getting it. <laughs> oh, 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 I'm still evangelizing you. Lord, whatever I cannot get that is heavenly endorsed, I don't want. If it's a car, let me walk. Let me walk. The father Adam. Kanamota yo ichand costa denga. Let me walk. Can I your and Costa relationship? Now I'm saying, if the Holy Ghost is going to depart from me and I stay in a new house, what's the point of that house? Because I need the Holy Ghost in that house. I don't want him to depart from me. David, after he messed up, he said, Oh, you can take my car, you can take my house, you can take my assets, but don't take the Holy Ghost from me. I refuse to lose the Holy Ghost based on a transaction. I wish somebody was in church. I I refuse to compromise until I lose the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, don't leave me. Holy Ghost, don't leave me. You are more precious than silver. You are more precious than gold. You are more precious than diamonds. You are more precious than bling. You are more precious than Rolls Royce. You are more precious than Porsche Cayenne. You are more precious than Mercedes Benz. You mean more to me than the corruptible things of this world. A car can be here right now and gone in an hour, but for a Ever my redeemer lives I'm gonna focus on the one who lives forever I'm gonna focus on the one who holds tomorrow he is more important than silver and gold yes I want the silver yes I want the gold yes I want the money yes I want the Rolls Royce but not at the expense of my soul
And when you make up your mind like that, there's no label that God will not allow you to wear. <laughs> because he knows you're wearing it to evangelize. <laughs> Am I speaking to somebody here? Somebody, your life is being rescued. Your destiny is being rescued. I'm telling you because you've been enticed by the world because of things. Hallelujah. The Bible says the love of money, not money. It is the love. It is that eros, that passionate desire for money is the root to all sorts of evil. Men are willing to sleep with other men for money. Hey. Women are willing to sleep with other women for money so that they can get financial support from the lesbian association. That devil is a liar. I said that foul spirit is a, it is a liar. I don't care how much money is in the gay department in the kingdom of dark. I don't want it. Keep your money. Hallelujah. That devil is a, is a liar. The Bible says, and Adam knew his wife Eve, not Steve. Hey, I wish somebody was in church. Hallelujah. They can attack me all they like. The Bible is the Bible. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Hallelujah. A devil is a liar. It's not Eve and Yvette. No, it's Adam and Eve. The devil is a liar. You need to refuse that compromise. Hallelujah. There's no amount of money that will make you sleep with the person of the same sex. And saints, I'm telling you, if you don't have this conviction, you just need to go down to South Africa over here. Hallelujah. You see men in Cape Town kissing men. Ay, 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 ay. I refuse. Hallelujah. My children will never be lesbians. Your sons will never become homosexuals. No matter for how much money. Hallelujah. Most of those issues is not that I am not a gay. That devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I will wait for somebody who I love. Hallelujah. I'm not going to marry because of pocket. I'm not going to marry because of convenience. That devil is a liar. I would rather be temporarily inconvenienced. Hallelujah. No matter how much pressure they put on you, hold on to your God. Job chapter 2, verse 7 to 9. Job's wife asked a, asked a very powerful question to Job because Job was being pressured by Babylon. Because Job was holding on to, on to his God. Job was, was, he was serving God. Job was sacrificing on God's altar. The Bible says Job sacrificed every day. That's why he was the greatest man in the East. So there's a connection between sacrifice and greatness. And the Bible says, God actually was bragging about Job to the devil. He said, devil, where are you coming from? He says, I'm coming to and fro. Okay. In case we're shy, I know how write. Have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered him? Can you imagine? God knew that he was his servant. He wasn't an undercover Christian like many are. Who denied the God on the marketplace. In case the people with the money don't give you money. So you don't openly say you are a Christian. You say I believe there is a God. Uh, money can make you do strange things. You don't understand. It is money for which Judah sold Jesus. He sold him out. He sold out the master for money. You'd be amazed how many people will sell out their best friend for money. You'd be amazed how many people will take the husband of a best friend for money. You'd be amazed how many people will compromise. So Judas sold Jesus for money. The brothers of Joseph sold a destiny child for money. And listen to what Job said, Job's wife said. She said, because he was under pressure. Somebody say pressure. Talk to me, say pressure. There is a demonic pressure that is being released via the economy. Via bills. School fees. Fuel is now only available in US dollars. 
<laughs> and that is demonic pressure being mounted on God's children. Just like Job was under so much pressure. And the Bible says he was sick. He was struck with balls by the devil. And listen, an agent of darkness who he was married to. Listen to what she said. She said, are you still going to hold on to your integrity? That question, that question. Under pressure, will you maintain your integrity? And that's the question that God is asking you today. He's saying, yes, you are in church today, you are saying amen. Yes, you are in church today and you are saying, I will refuse. But under pressure, are you going to say no? And his wife said, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Call, curse God and die. <laughs> curse God and die. This God that you have been telling us about, he has left you in trouble. Because the devil will do things to you and blame God. Uh, the wife was saying, curse God. Was it God who did this? No, it was not God who did this. So there are things the enemy is doing to you. But the enemy will tell you to curse God. And the enemy will use someone close to you. And in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost, may God purge everyone around you. Uh, anyone around me who allowed the devil to use them uh, to put pressure on me may they be purged by the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, Holy Ghost fire uh, destroy every relationship uh, that would destroy my relationship with God uh, yeah, yeah. I know you can't say that because you, you still want to keep your friendship uh, with the people you grew up with uh, my destiny is not predicated uh, upon people I grew up with hallelujah uh, may you reject friends that uh, push you away from God uh, may you reject people that uh, push you away from God hallelujah I said may you embrace uh, those that will tell you walk upright uh, walk in holiness this is wrong leave this alone hallelujah why are you drunk today hallelujah those are the friends that you need not people who pamper you to destruction hey a devil is a liar my father my god weed out every satanic agent in my life that will push me away from god weed out friendly enemies weed out even delilah who destroy me on her lap hallelujah delilah's lap was a soft place read your bible the enemy does not only come with spears the enemy does not only come with arrows he can come with a soft place. He can come with a soft bust. He can come with cushy thighs. Hallelujah! I'm telling you, church, you've got to watch out because Babylon has women to offer you. Say, Lord, my goal is more of you. Not more money, more of God. My goal is to know you more. Not to know more people in Babylon, but to know you. Because as I know you, you can even cause them to transfer the wealth into my hands. Lord, I need you more than I need the wealth. My Father, my God, I'm desperate for more of you. I need more of you. Oh, Father God, let me not be attracted to businesses connected to Babylon. They have unexplainable wealth that is supernatural acquired from Jezebel in Babylon my father my God I want to build with you not at the expense of my soul I refuse to build a business and at the same time not build my spiritual life at the same time not build my relationship with you there's no amount of silver there's no amount of gold that will that will force me out of your kingdom if it's money and you are not involved I don't want it my father my God help me to be steadfast help me to have the ability to resist the wealth of the wicked my father my God I want wealth and riches in my house according to Psalm 112 verse number 3 but my righteousness must endure for 
forever I want to hold on to my integrity despite pressure my father my God you said in James chapter number 4 verse number 7 if I resist Babylon it will flee give me the grace to resist the enticement of Babylon my father my God I don't want to be involved in satanic schemes that push me away from you Lord my father my God even as the man of God has taught us in times past that for us to release Babylon the key is to so is to surrender totally unto you so today my father my God I surrender total surrender unto you oh God I refuse to have one foot in Babylon and one foot in God's kingdom may my feet remain steadfast in your kingdom all my sacrifices I'll put them on your altar in God's kingdom for I know it's a way of killing the spirit of mammon help me my father my God oh Lord you are more important than silver and than gold when I seek you first and your kingdom according to Matthew chapter number 6 verse 33 you shall add all those things that are in Babylon you will add them unto me no strings attached so my father my God in the name of Jesus give me the grace to walk like Joseph who refused Potiphar's wife any sin that will push me away from your presence kill it Lord kill it Lord God kill every sin that will push me away from you oh Lord my money belongs to you my body belongs to you my time belongs to you my father my God from this day going forward my values will be values of the kingdom of God my worship will be unto you and you only even as they are Jesus saying master what is the most important principle in the kingdom and Jesus answered and said you shall love the Lord with all your heart with all your soul my father my God in the name of Jesus I will love you with my whole soul in the name of Jesus according to Matthew 22 verse 36 to 40 I will love you with my whole soul in the name of Jesus from today I'm no longer a lover of things I'm now a lover of God that demonic statement I rejected it's from Babylon I'm not a lover of things I'm a lover of God never again will I compromise to get things from the world my passion is for the things of God my passion is reserved for God my word Worship is reserved for God. My Father, my God, from today going forward, I'll be like Job, the greatest man in all of the East. He refused to curse God and die. From today going forward, I have made this firm conviction. I'm sold out to God. I will never curse my God because of financial pressure. I know as I hold on to God he will come he will rescue me for now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I can ask or think my father my God may I be like David a man after your own heart my father my God even as David refused to sell out for things and he sacrificed on God's altar may I be like David David and not like Saul who compromised on his sacrifice and that's how he lost the kingdom he kept some things he was supposed to sacrifice I refuse to hold on to anything that is supposed to find its way onto God's altar in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost help me oh God to be like the Hebrew boys who refused to bow who refused to bend and 
they said would rather burn than worship other gods from today going forward i will never worship any other god besides the true and the living God my father my God I thank you according to Job 36 verse number 11 if I obey and serve God I will spend my days in supernatural prosperity and years in pleasure father I thank you for this revelation that real supernatural prosperity is impossible without complete complete surrender unto you so from today i completely surrender everything unto you i surrender my money unto you i surrender my body unto you i surrender my will unto you i surrender my time unto you i surrender my worship unto you i surrender my kingdom service it will only be unto you my father my god I want to be a vessel that does not grieve the Holy Ghost. Help me, Lord, not to grieve the Holy Ghost. Help me to be a vessel that you can use to channel resources into the kingdom. As I go out on the marketplace, my Father, my God, I pray in the name of Jesus that I will come back to God's house with wood to build your house. My Father, in the name of Jesus, and by the power of the Holy Ghost may I never ever sell out because of hunger according to your word may I remain steadfast in the things of God I refuse to be a Judas I refuse to sell the master in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Ghost I will hold on to you oh God despite temptation I will hold on unto you in the name of Jesus